What has been blown way out of proportion? The sweater that was on a girl's windshield. Her mom went on Facebook or whatever saying it was a trick for an attempted kidnapping of her daughter and for young girls to watch out for sweaters on windshields. Turns out some teens just outed on there to be funny, nothing behind it, and, a lady in Saint, George, Utah accused a woman of trying to kidnap her child. She wasn't paying attention and grabbed the handle of the stroller thinking it was the handle of her shopping cart. Police investigated. The surveillance video shows her grabbing the stroller handle and releasing it because she realized her mistake before the mother even noticed. Apparently she went on Facebook and wrote some blown out of proportion story of what happened. No charges. No kidnapping attempt was made. I'm perversely happy that I have heard nothing about either of these. Sometimes I feel I spend too much time on the net. People blow everything politicians do out of proportion. My favorites from both sides was the Trump 2 scoops thing and the Obama putting mustard on his hamburger. Seriously, who gives a frick? Fidget spinners. There's magazines and anime about that. In my small country, 10.5m inhabitants, somehow a shipment of 16000 spinners was destroyed for not following some rules. It's just a bearing. Zika. It was all the hype on the news about how it's spreading and we're all gonna get it. Then the media just stopped reporting on it and no one cares. Far Cry 5 being in Montana, some place in Africa, some tropical place, and a fictional place that's somewhere around Nepal are okay. Just don't put your game in Montana apparently. As a Montanan, I look forward to seeing how the game is. Outrage culture is way out of hand. Everyone is outraged by something all the time if you believe the media, and everyone's response is to slam whatever they're mad about in social media. Related is the internet pile on culture, some nobody makes a thoughtless insensitive joke on Twitter or something and the entire internet decides this person is basically Satan and needs to have their life ruined, including contacting their employers and friends, posting all their private info, etc, etc. It's freaking disgusting and should frankly be illegal. Having a career. If you make good money and satisfied, then you do not have to listen to other people about being lazy for not wanting to move up. Moving up may mean more money, but also more hours, responsibilities, and stress. Don't let others dictate your life if you are happy with it. In the end, you decide to live your life and the most valuable commodity in life is not money, but time and how you spend it on earth. The Orson Welles hoax. The story actually consists of two hoaxes. Orson Welles radio play scared a handful of people and the media blew it out of proportion to the night America went crazy to stop radio from taking over newspapers by implying radio was dangerous or irresponsible. Crapping yourself after eating Taco Bell. I ate some tea bell breakfast and feel quite secure in my ability to sneeze with confidence all day long. It's never made me crap myself ever. I think the people this affects must eat like $30 of Taco Bell in a sitting. I've never had this problem either. Politics in America. People get physically and verbally attacked because of their views. Both sides. Sad that I feel the need to clarify that. Why can't we just discuss our differences and get along? Edit. I understand that people are upset. I just feel like violence isn't what is going to stop the hate that people hate. If you attack someone. They will just want to disagree with you more. If you respectfully argue with someone, they will listen to what you say and you might even get a new person to join your cause. You also might learn something. Again, that goes for both sides. Because the others are wrong. The amount of relevance the federal government actually has in everyday lives of most Americans. Relative to what states and cities can accomplish. Any new trend. For example fidget spinners. They are essential harmless right that won't stop some people to treat like it's one of the seven plagues of Egypt. They are so stupid omg why are you using them it'll break your ribs. Previously it was selfies they still are in many places. Selfie sticks. Vaping. Etc. Like why do people care so much. This happened with Pokemon Go really bad as well. I'm 23 and played it for at least a few months. Some people would like flip out at me and give me so much crap for playing it. And I'm just like sorry I'd rather be out doing that than sitting at home watching Bob's Burgers for 6 hours at a time Jen. Gender neutral washrooms. 
We've had them in my area for a very long time. You go in there to pee. You wash your hands. You leave. Nothing ever comes of it beyond a lot of people have a safe place to change their kids. For example, a dad with a little daughter. And couples can watch out for each other. Gender neutral bathrooms were around for a lot longer than gender specific ones. The two scoops of ice cream bowls. I've got a gallon in my freezer. That's more than the president has. Checkmate. Atheists. Wait wait. What's going on with this ice cream scandal I haven't heard of this yet. Cultural appropriation. Yes. Some cases are offensive and racist. But in cases where it's borrowing from another culture because you genuinely like and appreciate what its people have created. I've never seen a person from that culture complain. Tasteless tattoos. Bad. Dreadlocks or celebrating Kwanzaa with someone you love. Go for it. Seriously. Freaking chill. You don't need to be outraged for a culture you're not even part of. They're perfectly capable of choosing what they're angry about. The threat of terrorists like ISIS. Headlines read ISIS strikes a concert, killing dozens but the subtext is ISIS, a terrorist organization that's been around for multiple years and hasn't successfully achieved anything of note in their existence, once again took months on end to carry out an attack that required 5 seconds of planning, a makeshift bomb or a functioning car, they managed to kill a group of unarmed people at an insecure site. A feature ink that can be duplicated by literally anyone with motor skills. They've managed to date to kill no political power or breach any fortification more secure than a town bank. While people are right to mourn the loss of their loved ones. Understand that ISIS's power is a joke and their complete incompetence in carrying out terrorist attacks should be a sign that their terror is a fad whose death is inevitable as fidget spinners. Assuming they aren't just taking credit for every single school shooting and mass murdering that they didn't even take part in. That confederate flag removal thing. People really showed up with guns to protect a weak butt flag that's been obsolete for hundreds of years and were willing to shoot someone over it. I can understand the removal of the flag being important. What I didn't get were the removal of monuments. People who say the left are su triggered. It isn't the left who are triggered or special snowflakes. It's literally a minority in every group. Every nationality. Every race. It's not liberals. It's some of every single group. Yes. Some liberals get triggered when you don't agree with them. Some conservatives got triggered when a coffee cup was read without Christmas trees. On that note, people need to stop misusing triggered. It gets used as a cheap way to avoid discussing by just shouting heard or triggered because someone disagreed with them. They've made it meaningless. It's also insulting to those that do have triggers that set off flashbacks of traumatic events, like those with PTSD. That being liberal means you're an easily offended snowflake. I'm pro-marijuana, pro-choice, agnostic, democrat, pro-LGBT rights, etc etc, so pretty dang liberal. But no, I don't get outraged by every little thing. I don't get easily offended. I don't white knight frivolous causes on the internet aka keyboard warrior slacktivist sjw, and I know when something is just poor taste, or stupidity, and not actual hate that needs to be campaigned against or boycotted or censored. I also love dark humor. I'm not a snowflake. Or casting liberal or conservative like their insults. I had a family member call me a liberal because I argued about the current administration's treatment of the EPA. As if he was disgusted with me for my opinion and needed to call me the devil. Safe spaces. It seems like for every one time where someone actually tries to create a safe space, I find 20 people decrying them. Terrorism. It kills men or people and is a blight on society and our world. But it receives an absurd amount of coverage and tension in proportion to other threats. The billions of dollars spent. Millions of hours wasted yearly in security lines that do nothing. Countless horrible policies that restrict freedoms. The world would be a better place if we stopped blowing terrorism out of proportion. Because when we do, they win. <laughs> Hatred for the dab. There's a whole dance style along with it. Now, just because a lot of people find it amusing. It's treated like the most awful social faux pas imaginable. Everybody does it in parody. They know it's a little bit dumb. Just, chill. Bottle flips, fidget spinners, Pokemon Go, and dabbing. If something young people enjoy gets popular, people will hate it. 
the influence alcohol commercials have on society. I don't think anyone sees a man on TV climbing a mountain and says yeah, alcoholism sounds great. This is just a result of the 21 year wait and its mystery and lack of education prior, and society saying alcohol is the life of the party. Also, peer pressure. I've never been pressured, and anyone who asks will take no for an answer. Politics today. Nearly every American on both sides want the same things. Eliminate poverty. Provide equal opportunity for everyone. Make society better for everyone. Everyone to be healthier? Act. We just have different ideas about how to accomplish them. Instead we think that the other side is evil and hateful. There are a few select elitists on both sides that want to keep us divided, and they are doing a very good job at it. Also both sides have different world views in what makes society better, what causes poverty and what equality, equal opportunity or equal outcome, would look like. People freaking out about SJWs. If there's ever an example of rage against a thing being enormous when the thing itself is really small it's this. I've never come across anyone that fits the description in real life, and they are surely few and far between. However I think the people who are outraged at them might start to see them everywhere. Like they see someone with color in their hair and go there's one when in reality they aren't. Also seriously the way you can get judged for having a little color in your hair is insane. Everyone freaking out about MRSA. MRSA simply means methicillin resistant staph aureus. It means that it's a pathogen that has resistance to common antibiotics. Contrary to popular belief, it does not mean that the pathogen is resistant to all antibiotics. While working in a hospital, you wouldn't believe how many colleagues say crap like, you better hope that you don't catch that guy's MRSA. If you do, no antibiotics will work and your arm will fall off. Nope, we just have to treat your infection with Bactrim, Vanco, or Linozolid instead. How people see Trump. There's always that one person who exaggerates either about how bad or how great he is. Ever since he and Hillary came into the light of 2016, the public was either you love him her, or you hate him her. We've truly been divided, or was it always that way? Cultural appropriation. I'm a diehard liberal, and I back pretty much every cultural issue. Cultural appropriation is a problem, mostly in terms of dickhole fratbrus bastardizing cultures that are legit fascinating. But like most things, some people take it way too far. Like some girl I know told me I couldn't say you because I was stealing from black culture. Mother that's how culture works. It's a big ol' melting pot, and I love black culture for creating things like that. I hate it only when other people do it. Terrorism. Sometimes literally, it's hysterical how much drama there has to be, solely because something is branded terrorism. But when there's a school shooting, serial car crash, collapse of a building, food poisoning or just governments trying to impose authoritarian mass surveillance laws, there's nothing in the media about it. No cries of terror, no sympathy speeches from politicians or the public, no nothing, even during large murder cases. Hence people get so worked up about lots of people dying. Most of the time it's not even a lot of people dying, especially not over a longer time scale. Yet it takes up the most attention and causes the biggest policy shifts. That's weird, really. Imagine if when there's a conventional terrorist attack, as in, not 9-11, but more like what happened in the UK and it wasn't called terrorism, but just something more pedestrian. Maybe it would be different then and more rational responses could be made. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.